Berries are nature's original superfoods. They're loaded with vitamins, low in carbs for those looking to get the shine, and they're low in fuss too, so you really should be growing them. Hi, I'm Ben, and if you want to get more berries into your diet without forking out a pretty penny at the grocery store, now's your chance to grow them for free. Come on, let me show you how. First up is raspberries, which are one of the very easiest soft fruits to grow because they virtually propagate themselves. They grow by sending out shoots from their roots called suckers. Some of these appear quite some distance from the, the main plant, and we can take advantage of this by simply lifting them up to plant elsewhere. So ideally, we want to look for suckers that are at least about a foot or 30 centimetres from the main plant, so we don't damage it when we dig it up. Once we've identified that, it's just a question of getting the fork under there and digging it up. And here we go, this is looking like a really good sucker actually, nice and strong. If it was attached to the main parent plant, I'd just cut it free uh, before digging it up. Obviously that bit there is dead wood. Now, I'm going to plant this into a hole that's exactly the same depth it, it was at before, so about here. And then once I've done that, just trim it down to about ooh, 10 inches or 25 centimetres tall making a cut just above a bud at a slant like that there. There we have it. Obviously keep this well watered to help it establish and this is very very important only take uh, suckers like this from really healthy disease-free plants. That's important because you don't want to pass on problems from one plant to the next. You can transplant suckers like this at any time of year but autumn or early spring before the buds burst into leaf is best. Blueberries are a firm favourite of any health conscious fruit lover and in fact winter is the ideal time to take hardwood cuttings of many fruit garden staples. Now this is my blueberry here which I planted last autumn into a pot of acidic or ericaceous compost. It's put on quite a lot of new growth since then and we can use some of that to propagate new plants. As you can see, the plant here has still got quite a lot of leaves on it. Autumn has been very late indeed here. And in fact, the very best time to take hardwood cuttings of blueberries is towards the end of winter, once the plant has had a bit of a winter chilling period. But I'm gonna take some cuttings now just to demonstrate how to do that. So what we're looking for is good young stems like this, nice and straight and strong, that's perfect and you can tell the younger wood by the colour of the stem, either pale green or red, and it's a lot lighter than the darker wood down here towards the base of the plant. So all I'm gonna do is just take my material here and then we'll trim them up shortly. So we want to trim the cuttings down to about, uh, what, six inches or uh, 15 centimetres in size. Before we do that, we're just gonna sterilise our pruners or secateurs here using a mix of um, about one part household bleach to five parts water and that just makes sure we're not carrying over any disease keep it nice and clean right to trim them i'm going to cut just below a leaf node that's where the bud appears from and um, cut a nice straight cut across the bottom like that and then at the top of the cutting i'm going to give a slightly slanted cut what that does, if I get mixed up, it means I know which end is up so that they don't get planted upside down by accident. Once you have your cuttings, it's time to pop them up. And I'm using a really low nutrient free draining mix here of just coconut coir fibre and some perlite added in as well for really good drainage. You could use say uh, coarse sand, coir and pine bark for example. Anything that gives free draining mix and plenty of air at the roots and that's what these cuttings need. I'm going to dip them into this hormone rooting gel. They are also available as powders. It's not essential, but it does up the chances of the cuttings rooting successfully. So you may as well, right? So just dip them in, and then they're going in to about half their depth. And each little node that is underground uh, should eventually produce some roots. So getting about half the cutting in there ensures that there's uh, plenty of chance for root growth. I'm popping the cuttings in around the side of the pot. This actually also helps with drainage and keeps the cuttings further apart from each other 
so that their roots won't get too enmeshed. With them all done, I'm gonna give them a really good water and then it's important to put them somewhere sheltered. So like a cold frame, for example, or against the house. Then you need to keep them sheltered from very strong sunshine in the first summer. Keep the uh, potting medium nice and moist here and then by the end of next autumn, they should have roots on them and you should be able to separate them out and plant them. Now is also the ideal time to take hardwood cuttings of currants and gooseberries as well as many tree fruits like fig and mulberry and even grapevines. And unlike blueberries, they can be taken at any time during the dormant season, so from autumn right through to the end of winter. This is a quiet time of year in the garden, so if you're itching to grow something then this should keep you busy. Summer fruits are delicious, but the work starts now in winter, and this is honestly one of the very easiest ways to start them off. I brought you over here to show you these four blackcurrant bushes here. These were actually taken from cuttings just three years ago, and they've already started to form really good sized bushes. I'm actually quite confident they should flower and fruit very soon, perhaps as early as next summer. Now, did you know that the vast majority of blackcurrants go into making fruit cordials? In fact, something around 90%. But I think we should be eating currants in their own right because they're delicious fruits. So I hope you're encouraged to give them a go. You can take your hardwood cuttings at the same time as pruning your currants or gooseberries. Just use the offcuts. I love it when nothing goes to waste like that. The ideal time to take your cuttings is in uh, mid-autumn, just after the leaves have fallen, but you can wait until the end of winter, just before they burst into leaf. Now you want to take your cuttings from younger material, and you can tell that by the colour of the stem. These stems are a lot paler than the older wood further down the bush here, so you know what to take. Ideally, you want them of about pencil thickness, so these here are absolutely perfect. Now let's uh, trim them down to size and we want our cuttings about a foot or 30 centimetres in length. Do make sure that your secateurs or pruners are properly sterilised before doing all of this. So, um, cut just below a bud, giving a straight flat cut like that. And then cut the top at a slant just above a bud, making the slant just going away from the bud. And what that does is it means there's less risk of water sort of congregating near the bud and causing it to rot. And of course it makes it easier to identify which end of the cutting is up. Here we've got our prepared cuttings. So these ones are of black currants. They're a foot length as I said, ready to go. These ones here are of gooseberries. And what you want to do with gooseberries as well as red currants and white currants is actually just pick off these lower buds so that you leave just the top three or four buds. And the reason we do this is that these plants grow on a short stem, so that you have the, the bush growth on a sort of leg, if you like, a clear stem. So do that with the uh, gooseberries, red currants, white currants, but the black currants we leave as they are. When it comes to planting your cuttings, you've got two options, in the ground or in pots. I'll show you how to do both methods, starting with in the ground. Now, when they're in the ground, you want an area that's uh, got good, well-drained soil. This had a compost heap on it recently, so there's no need to add any more fertility to it. It needs to be sheltered because um, you want them to be have no stress or strain as they're growing. So what I'm doing here is I'm just digging a little trench along the ground, and that's where the cuttings will go into. The soil here is pretty well drained, but just to make absolute sure, I'm gonna add a little bit of coarse or sharp sand into the bottom of the trench here like that. Just tickle it in, and that'll just really help with drainage. If your soil is quite heavy, doesn't drain very well, then this I think is a very important step. I've now just got to uh, push the cuttings into place, and they're going about half to two thirds deep and about I don't know, six inches to a foot, that's uh, 15 to 30 centimetres apart, so they don't grow into each other, the roots stay apart. And then just firm them in like that. These will be left where they are, out of the way, and transplanted next autumn. 
if you don't have lots of cuttings or you don't have much garden space to spare, then they grow really well in uh, pots. The pots will need to be deep enough to accommodate the quite long cuttings, so something like this is ideal. Fill it with a good mix of potting mix, uh, cut with say some coarse sharp sand and that'll really help with drainage like we've discussed before. So with the pot filled, I just need to pop my cuttings in. Just push them down to about half to two thirds the depth of the cutting. That might seem quite deep, but uh, there'll be roots coming along from those nodes that are under, under the surface there. Again, I'm putting them towards the edge of the pot so that they aren't competing with each other. Lovely stuff. Now all I need to do is move this somewhere sheltered. A greenhouse or cold frame again is ideal, somewhere out of the worst of the cold, and that will also help protect them from potential browsers like uh, rabbits and deer. Keep it well watered again, and then by next autumn they should be good to separate out and plant. You may see some new growth by the end of spring. Here are some cuttings a few months after taking them, and if we remove them from their container, you can see they've already produced some roots. Leave your cuttings untouched though. You want them to remain in their pot or in the ground where they are for at least a year before either carefully separating them out or digging them up to transplant into their final growing positions. If they produce any flower buds before this point, just pick them off to concentrate the young plant's energy on root formation. And here are the cuttings about 16 months after taking them in the spring of their second year. You can see how much growth they've put on. They had a really fantastic root system by this point. Holes were dug into prepared soil, enriched with plenty of garden compost, and the young plants popped into place and firmed in. And here they are planted, that's a rhubarb in the middle, and then again another year on. Don't forget that excess berries are easily frozen, so there's really no risk of going overboard when including these very good for you fruits in your garden. Now, will you be using any of these methods to grow more berries and get them into your garden? Join in the conversation down below. Just you wait till I tell you what we've got coming up next time, a fabulous foray into the fantastic world of fungi. Homegrown mushrooms? Yes siree. You won't want to miss it, so please make sure you're subscribed and have turned on all notifications. Now, if you want to bulk out your strawberry patch, do be sure to check out this video. I'll catch you next time.